welcome back. You got Will and Iron Man here from the Block Runner Metazone, Roby and M Scribe. And today we're gonna be talking about our good old tap protocol, dude. Benny's day, dude. It's, it's one of those days. It is Benny's day. Yes, yeah, it's, it's time to talk about some tap, dude. Because uh, I guess there's a lot of confusion afoot. I mean, un- understandably so. Like right? everybody's. Yeah, crypto is <laughs> pretty complex, I man. <laughs> who who would have thunk that? Yeah, but even more so when you introduce this idea of building in like an ecosystem without any framework to like leverage, mm. like uh, unlike Ethereum, right? Like Ethereum came with built in, um, I guess, scripting model or developer model mm. to, to build applications and such, right? Bitcoin has its own native like scripting languages, right? But they're not necessarily designed for that purpose, right? Yeah. So us, Bitcoin native L1 developers, we got to deal with this conundrum one way or another, right? And That's we right. recognize it, recognize this super early on because, you know, we come from the metaverse space. And us personally, something we were trying to achieve over there was to create or bring in more functionality and like robust developer capability into the metaverse like equation itself, right? Yeah, and solve an economic conundrum as well. <laughs> well, yeah, you cannot even like address the economic c- considerations without like having the ability to yeah. have programmable token logic that's like reactive to certain occurrences happening in conditions. Like conditions. conditions. Yeah. 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 So it's like, all right, we're building this on Ethereum. Like we got some tools we could use, right? These smart right. contracts come in handy. That's right. And then we're like, you know what? Metaverse on Bitcoin's a big fucking deal. Yeah. It should be. <laughs> right? And like f- so that our th- our thesis is still like we gotta build these metaverse apps. Yeah. We're like, holy shit, dude. It's like, we, well, we can't do it. <laughs> Where are the tools? Where's the smart <laughs> contracts, dude? Yeah. You know, we're like, fuck. So we've been kind of like in a year-long tussle, us as developers ourselves. Right. But luckily, we had Benny, right, who is aligned in our understanding way back in the day when nobody gave a fuck about programmability. Yeah, we found track in the early days of BRC20 when the total market cap was around $20 million. Track? Track. No, to- dude. Like we found it at like two hundred thousand. No, no, I know, but the total oh, market cap of oh. BRC twenty was twenty million. Track was at two hundred thousand market cap. Yeah, it was a baby fish, dude. Not even yeah. a fish, dude. It was like a, a sperm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> wait, you fish fish don't come from sperms, right? They come from eggs. You know what I mean? Same thing, same <laughs> difference. <laughs> Basically, it was like um in like an incubation state, like because it was just an idea at that time, but it was addressing a core. Dilemma, which is yeah, indexing. It, was, it was one of the very few BRC twenties that had any like potential functionality. <laughs> yeah, and everybody else was like looking for like the most like meme memetic opportunity. Right. And we're like, no, fuck that noise, dude. Like who's actually gonna build some shit? Yes. That's where our relationship kind of began with Benny and like as he understood, is like, dude, we need more primitives. We need to expand this beyond just BRC twenty and yeah. like these these meta protocols that all they do is issue a arbitrary supply of like some useless token to be honest that's right that's right so bitcoin's never gonna like do anything substantial under yeah. those frameworks so we've been building on tap ever since right and um yeah now tap is doing this icp thing to like expand the scope even further so we're gonna try our best to contextualize that yeah so we're, we're looking at a tweet here by tap protocol and benny had a uh, a call with dfinity and they broke down sort of the functionality of yeah. Of bringing programmability on Bitcoin. Yeah. And uh, so it's a, it's a good watch, but there's there's a moment in here, I think, at 1429, right? 1914. Or 1914? Yeah. It says on-chain proof of DeFi. So Benny gives an example of issuing an, an ordinal inscription, JSON data, that directly communicates to a programmable um, container on ICP. Yeah, which basically with... That is like the smart contract of yeah. the ICP network. That's right. And so so now what you're doing is you have two-way communication between this like smart contract and like layer one. And you could and it goes both ways. You can design a smart contract that manipulates the UTXOs on Bitcoin, and now you have programmability. Yeah. Right? And so yeah. it's transparent, it's using subnets. Mm-hmm. Nodes are supporting these subnets and mm-hmm. it's decentralized. Yeah, so ICP has its own like fucking like structure of like I- interpreting how the whole ICP network like maintains and sustains itself. That's a whole motherfucker in itself. Yeah. Right? But the end product of that are these like these trustless subnets that, that, that execute 
you know, these and validate the, like these containers, right? So that mm -hmm. you, and in this case, there's one that's able to directly call from the information that's being inscribed onto Bitcoin layer one, which is what Benny has been, t you know, tinkering around with to prove mm -hmm. this whole flow of like, again, uh, putting these command, um, uh, command instructions on chain on Bitcoin and for these containers to just be able to regurgitate that for developer use. Mm -hmm. Now we can build decentralized applications, right? Yeah. And, uh, if you want to know more, definitely watch our video. We interviewed, um, Jordan last, um, he built Azel and, yeah. and we're going to be talking about that here. Azel is using TypeScript and JavaScript to generate the smart contracts. So yeah. if you are a TypeScript or JavaScript developer, you can build the smart contracts on ICP. Which is good, right? Even though Solidity and like the whole Ethereum virtual machine now, it's pretty massive, right? It's attracted a lot of devs. They've acquired that like ability to like, you know, build out these functions under that like uh, technology framework stack. Yeah, yeah. But JavaScript and TypeScript is like ubiquitous in yeah. like all of Web2 development, right? Yeah, so that's what Benny's using, and he said that he loves it. It's very simple. Yeah, it's like going back to the roots of software development, he said. Yeah. Like actual true software development. Like Bitcoin, or not Bitcoin, crypto development has its own like, like yeah. freakiness to it. Like, you know, because of the considerations you have to do. Yeah. So it's it doesn't compute all the time, all the way for like a, a typical Web2 dev, which is fine, right? Yeah, so I remember back in uh, in uh, the Ethereum days, back in like 2020, 2021, a smart contract developer was like 250 grand salary. Yeah. Or more. Yeah. And uh, it's definitely not that anymore. No, now it's like, <laughs> it's like any junior dev, essentially. Yeah. It gets paid the same amount for uh, smart contract engineering and such, right? Because it's well understood now. It's just... Another one of those things. So yeah, but yeah. So this is obviously very good. By the way, we had a, a Twitter space on Friday. If you guys yes. don't know. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna be talking with the Tap ecosystem. Tap is hosting these Twitter spaces. We, so we had one last week. Uh, we're gonna have these weekly. And this week, Jordan Lass is gonna join us to kind of like continue on contextualizing what's happening. Yeah. Um, all right, so moving on, we have a tweet here. Every ICP metric is setting an all-time high. So um, I remember when ICP came out, and there was a lot of uh, fanfare and everything, and um, that was like the first time I was like, internet computer. I was like, we got another competitor to Ethereum. Yeah. But now there's a lot of developers who are actually really enjoying building on ICP. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's our signal to be like, okay, let's take this seriously. Right. Typically, yeah. Yeah, because we follow where the devs go, and that's where all the important stuff is happening. Correct. Yeah, so in light of what's happening natively within TAP, like I think uh, the ecosystem community, whatever, they've had to deal with like a multi-year battle, like battling against like market sentiment, right? Because there was a lot of narratives in the early days of its token launch, like, you know, surrounded a VC um, manipulation, this, this, and that, right? Like. Mm -hmm entering the market at like an overinflated valuation, stuff like this. Right. And that, yeah. that was kind of like a big major detraction point yeah. to like, why get involved in the ecosystem at all? But I think enough time has gone by and the technology has only gotten better over time. So now like a new tranche of web three tinkerers can kind of like join in like that noise is like completely gone at this point. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So chain fusion. So this is, Interesting, because this is uh, something TAP is leveraging, right? Chain Fusion? Yeah, it says the demand for Chain Fusion technology is surging with queries and updates to the fiduciary subnet increasing by over 11x in the past year. And so check this chart out. And it says query messages to update messages. We're seeing, um, you know, a ton of engagement here. And so that's just, uh, just an example of, like, the utilization of, like, a bunch of developers actually being able to query stuff and and gain access to the data from uh, these smart contracts yeah and if you go watch this video with tap and Benny um, he gives you it gives you an example of like actually querying the data from Bitcoin's blockchain and extracting that data yeah yeah that you get definitely guys you guys got to watch that for sure um, but yeah chain fusion I think is the technology that like you said enables that smart contract interaction right mm -hmm. so and there's like an additions happening i don't know if you i think you're called schnorr signatures mm -hmm. right yeah. i think you know some things about this but th there are different enhancements i guess to kind of 
contribute to like the bridging process, I think, of assets between, um, you know, Bitcoin layer one and ICP. Because something else that was also said within that interview is the optionality for developers like ourselves. If uh, for our users, whatever app we end up building, you have you're gonna have the option, right? So you only leverage Bitcoin L1 and this um, yeah container to inscription communication process. So you're still interacting natively on the la- L1 ecosystem, mm-hmm. or you can give users the option to just completely bridge over to ICP as like an L2 environment. Yeah, right? yeah, and so it all depends on your use case, right? If you yeah. if you require something where there's like a you know, a large amount of security requires. So you want to leverage Bitcoin, Bitcoin's security, then you stay on layer one. Yeah. But like, say, for example, you're creating a metaverse on Bitcoin and you want people to interact in the economy. Maybe it doesn't make sense to wait 10 minutes mm. for a transaction to go through so you can access some sort of like yeah experience in the metaverse. We have, again, personal experience with that from Ethereum. Like we built, again, these, f- these first uh, representations of metaverse apps in Decentraland and, they were doing well. A lot of user retention activity was happening. People were engaged daily. There were microtransactions being processed, enrolled and stuff. And then eventually the Ethereum network got clogged. Thank you, CryptoKitties. And DeFi. And DeFi, yeah. And yes, and NFTs. <laughs> Just pretty <laughs> much everything, right? And we're like, holy shit. What used to cost 50 cents or so to process quickly ballooned into like 20 bucks, 50 bucks. Yeah. Right. Seventy dollars, yeah. I remember a hundred bucks. Yeah, too. which is unfeasible, right? If you're, you're the microtransaction itself is like a dollar or less. Yeah. Right? Like who the hell's gonna pay a hundred bucks to process a dollar, you know, to play some game or to yeah, you know, purchase some content, whatever. Right. So yeah. hence the L two expansion and Polygon, it was kinda like the main service provider that came in and serviced that uh dilemma. So Yeah, so for that use case it makes sense to kind of um, integrate L2 functionality within the metaverse and just kind of stay within that L2 ecosystem. Yeah, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Like, yeah. You know, as, as many L2s are out there kind of front running this reality, it's not needed yet. Right. But, I but, mean, but there's still going to be interactions with L1. Like, for example, the assets in the metaverse are going to be L1 assets because yeah. they're more expensive, more valuable, and you, you're going to want to sec- that security on Bitcoin. Correct. So yeah, like there's a lot of information coming out, dude. It's like this is sh- for sure the direction of the TAP ecosystem, right? That's yeah. All right. So here we're, we're taking a look at the ICP TVL, right? Yeah. And so you're saying that this is all going to a DAO? Well, it looks like it. Yeah. 44 million. Is, yeah, uh, 44 million is the service nervous system. Hmm. I believe that's like the main DAO component of ICP. But yeah, yeah. of course, we, we got to do our... More due diligence, because like we said, it's it's quite the motherfucker to get a full grasp of what's happening on ICP. I mean, it's yeah. it's a lot, right? But nonetheless, this is what you do when you approach like a new, a new layer, a new blockchain, right? It's like, what's how's the TVL looking? Mm-hmm. So there's improvements happening over time. Uh, every L2 is going to have this kind of like growth and expansion of their TVL. Yeah, and so this is just a signal that there's like interest and support happening. Activity, essentially, yeah. Yeah. This is basically proof of smart contract. Yeah. In my eyes. Yeah. You know, because back in the Ethereum days, we, we were witnessing the happening, like in the early, early DeFi bubble. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, wow, this this number keeps going up, this TVL thing. It's yeah. like, it's 100 billion, 200 billion. Before you knew it, it was a billion. Yep. We're like, uh-oh, something something's ha- cooking here, dude. <laughs> and it went from 1 billion to like 50 in like a blink of an eye. Yeah. As an Ethereum bag holder, I don't like that you guys keep talking about it in the past tense. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so that our thing? best days are ahead of us. I mean, dude, <laughs> dude. I mean, if you go to their TVL chart, it doesn't look like they're going anywhere. I agree, but there's there's <laughs> a big pie out there, TJ. You know, <laughs> the Bitcoin pie, dude. Just saying, let's talk about it present tense. <laughs> okay, well, we'll, we'll adjust our uh, our terminology Thank there. You. Yeah. <laughs> Just make me feel better. <laughs> Dude, you're, you're going to be fine, TJ. Trust me. I know. You're going to be fine. We're going to bridge all your value to Bitcoin <laughs> at some point, dude. <laughs> Don't worry. All right. So we're looking at another tweet here. But not all is blue skies, I man. Mm. It says ICP got shadow banned on coin market cap. Oh, wow. So they removed ICP in all, uh, nearly all categories AID pin, Bitcoin eco, Damn. real world assets, vested interest, self interest, or afraid of real tech. 
Yeah, so this is kind of what we were talking about earlier. It's just this, <laughs> this sentiment, right? ICP has been under like a bombardment from many different parties for many different reasons. It's 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 kind of like a it's it's definitely has some battle scars, which a lot of things do. But you know, in a lot of cases, or in some cases, that's typically a good sign, right? Like. Mm, yeah, and you know, people like to yeah suppressing like information. Well, just in general, when something gets like overly faded or like overly attacked, for whatever reason, like t- tap itself, I could argue has been yeah like it's crazy. There's a whole programmability discussion happening in the Bitcoin eco, and majority of those people are just excluding tap from the conversation. Yeah, which is mind blowing to us, but <laughs> that's what happens, right? It's crazy. Yeah, it's okay. So I mean, maybe it's the perfect. Perfect uh, marriage of like communities, right? We're both dealing with like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like getting shunned by, by the uh, like the uh, the, the establishment. Just the vocal, yeah. yeah. I mean, coin coin market cap is pretty big, but Coin Gecko, obviously greater than. Yeah, Coin Gecko hasn't shadow banned ICP. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Tap Protocol. So they did a coin list launch, uh, maybe about two months ago, or a month yeah, ago. Yeah, two months ago, roughly. And month, um, yeah. and so the pre valuation here is seventy four, seventy five million dollars. Yeah. And then they raised about four point two million in their ICO token launch. Yeah. So this was a big deal because nothing really native to Bitcoin kind of like got to this stage of like ecosystem rollout. Not a single one. Yeah, tap tap was the first one to kind of like break the mold and, and actually get into like the equation of like Web three actually. Yeah. <laughs> like cementing itself as a as a real player, right? Yeah. Typically, what you do in these TGE events, right? That's right. Yeah. So and tap's still the only one. Correct. Uh, for now, I mean, if the Bitcoin eco really does light up and fire up, there should be many, 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 many more of these in the future. There should be, yes. But yeah, that's only going to contribute to the value of like the perception of tap and track and all that because they were first, right? That's right. So yeah, what's the opportunity here? Yeah. Let, let's talk in context of like market comparables. Yeah. So remember, seventy-five million, and what what does tap do? What does track do? They're an indexer, mm. right? We've seen indexers before, right, on Ethereum. Yeah. And right. so. One of them is the graph. Yeah, so the track token itself is like, so there's two tokens to talk about here. It's track and tap, right? Mm-hmm. The track token itself is kind of like the the anchor for validation within the, the network of track nodes, right? Like that's that's what you need to actually participate in the network. But the incentive token model comes from the tap token itself. Kind of like if you're going to be an indexer in the graph network, mm-hmm. you know, you're, the whole purpose of doing that is competing for these graph tokens, right? Yeah, that's right. So that's the incentive token, GERT itself. Mm-hmm. That's what maintains and upholds the integrity of the entire system, right? Because if you're a dishonest node, you're going to get slashed. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to get your incentive, right? Yeah. Reward. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. And so 75 million for TAP, and then we have 1.3 billion uh, for GRAPH. So there's a good market comparison. And then another, another one we have is Chainlink. Mm. And so we have a total market cap of 6 billion here. And so, yeah, you're looking at a potential opportunity there um, if we ever saw one. And we've been talking about track and tap since it was $200,000, dude. So what do you think needs to happen, I guess, for these, like, comparisons to actually, like, play out, right? Because well, Chainlink... Th- I think there needs to be a, a pretty large ecosystem of developers on Bitcoin. <sighs> right. But, yeah, so Chainlink has competitors, too. Like, you know, there, there were several... Yeah, there... Yeah, they do have competitors, yeah. Just like we're witnessing new competitors to track starting to emerge in the Bitcoin ecosystem, right? Like uh, Santru mm-hmm. is introducing a new indexer suite of tools. So that, that can absolutely manifest into a, a network of nodes, you know, kind of supporting the Proto Runes meta protocol or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got the Layer 1 Foundation. What is it? The OPI? Yeah, OPI, Open, Open Protocol. Indexers, I yeah. guess. That can absolutely manifest into another one of these kind of like track lookalikes. Yeah. So I could see that. But but again, because of its market positioning, you know, tap and track is so far ahead of the pack. Yeah. Like proving, creating the model, proving its success, basically incepting a whole new meta of meta protocols. Yeah. And ultimately right. being right, because they're, they've, they've been talking about programmability since the drop. And, and now everyone else is talking about programmability. Yeah, correct. 
So yeah. there's a question of whether or not these indexers need their own native tokens to support like validation sustainability. Like Opnet, I don't think has its own no. token to support the ins or the incentives, or maybe it does. So we need to. No, they they don't. They they say that they're they're using Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. And a share of like the fees being generated from all that stuff. So right, right. there are incentive mechanisms in place, and that's critical, right? That's like step one. If it yeah. doesn't make sense to like perform these duties from like an incentive pr perspective, yeah, you know, you don't have an ecosystem. Yeah, and Benny's always talking about decentralizing their indexer too. So you need that incentive token to to do that. Correct. Okay. Um, yeah. So we talked about a lot today. Tap, track, ICP. Uh, programmability on Bitcoin Layer 1, L2, functionality and necessity. Yeah. Um, so if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section below. Be sure to join us in Discord. There's a lot happening. And I appreciate it. And we will catch you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>